Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about going broke, being a Magic the Gathering player, and what better example than Boogie. The fastest way to grow, go broke in Magic the Gathering is to believe that cards are a, a an investment. And the reason that this is the fastest way is should be obvious, that if you think something is an investment and something you know that is valuable in the future you are more willing to buy. So instead of buying a box at your local game store to open among friends, you buy a case to keep in your closet. You don't open the case. You don't know how to sell the case. It just sits there. And this is the most dangerous game to play. Now, if you have the capital, if you have the money, you have a job, you know, Boogie doesn't really have a job here, then maybe you can keep the game that, you know, falling knives, you can juggle the knives. But if you don't have a decent source of income and you don't have the ability to make money, then you are in grave, grave danger, my friend. And the grave danger that you are in should be pretty obvious. Once the cards go down or once you go to sell the cards and realize that there are nothing, no one interested in buying the cards, you're screwed. Uh, without further ado, this is Boogie in a nutshell. People don't sell their cards like Gayer's Kratos unless they have to sell their cards. And when they have to sell their cards, that's when it gets kind of predatory because the local game store, even the card kingdom, they understand that they can buy the cards for a very low price point. And that creates a lot of, you know, hub job. And and again, back to my initial <coughs> analysis on this, like people go broke thinking that cards are investments more than I've seen it. You know, so many of Rudy's patrons tell me this. They go broke uh, investing in games they may not even like. Like Meta Zoo, how many of those patrons actually liked it? How many of them bought them because they, they thought it was a great investment? All of them. You know, it, it, it's an investment opportunity. And the outlook looks good according to the guy who's selling you this opportunity. So my point uh, of making this video is I want to be really, really clear that in terms of money, in terms of investment, in terms of thinking that your collectibles have long-term value, that's the fastest way to go to zero, guys. Um, if you don't deal in collectibles, if you don't sell them on a regular basis, if you don't have a store or online presence, it's really, really hard to move these things. And no one tells you them until it's too late. And you're back to selling it back to the guy who sold it to you, Alpha Investment. So I think that Boogie2988 is a very good example of somebody who can't control his desire. I mean, look out, look at him. He obviously has self-control issues, right? And he doesn't, he can't control it. And it gets out of hand. Uh, the spending gets a little bit too much and there's not much that you can do. So I do think that in terms of investments, that we cannot look at these as investments anymore. These are not 401ks, and that's why I'm doing my topic. I'm trying to show you in real time that compared to a 401k, the S&P 500, those are real investments that you can buy in and sell anytime you want. With a click of a button, as long as the market is active, within a few seconds, you're buying and selling right at the price point it says. But for magic cards, liquidity is such a hard issue. Liquidity is a nightmare for many, many magic cards, and even the good ones, right? There are fake cards, there are scammers, there are people who buy your real card on eBay, and then they file a, a, a claim against you, and they turn out to be a Nazi with like 20 criminal convictions. I mean, it happened. It literally happened. And it's, it's probably one of the saddest things in Magic the Gathering is that it does... Magic the Gathering, sports cards, they do attract actual criminals. I'm not talking about, oh, these guys. No, no, I'm talking about actual registered criminals. 
Some of them are on a registry. So there you go. And it's just the type of game that attracts individuals like this. We're not playing golf at the Houston Open or where I am. I'm located. You know, I, I feel pretty confident those are other criminals, and, but they're white. You know, they're, they're not, you know, blue collar criminals. They're white collar criminals. But nonetheless, um, here in Magic the Gathering, we have people who are broke investing in cards. This is very, very, very obvious. They've spent all this money buying these boxes. And I can't remember the last Magic set that is worth more than what people paid for. I know it's not any set that I own. I know it's not Crimson Vow. I know it's not Strixhaven or New Campena or Neon Dynasty or any of these. I, I know it's not these sets. And, and the crazy part, in my personal opinion, right, is that I can't imagine a set in the last three, four years that was profitable. Like, I, I seriously don't. Like, is Meta Zoo profitable? Like, I don't know. Their boxes are $20, $30 a box. They can't be, right? Is Pokemon that profitable? No, since Scarlet and Violet, not really. I mean, it's just kind of a fun open, I think. I, I enjoy opening it with my girlfriend, and we have a fun time opening it. But that's my point. Magic, the, the best way, the fastest way to go to the zero in, mat, in, in any investment is to put money in something you don't understand. That you don't know how to sell. You don't know how to buy. You don't know what your margin should be. I, in fact, somebody was starting a game store. One of the people I used to work with on this channel he used to make shorts on this channel. Um, and... And, and he didn't know what the margin should be. Well, don't open a game store if you don't know what the margin should be. You know, like for the, your store. Th these are basic things that you need to know. So back to my initial assessment as to people going broke, like Buggy, Magic the Gathering player specifically having bad finances and they're listening to people on YouTube telling them $8,200 for this Meta Zoo thing is a steal. Um, no, it's not. I mean, it, it, it's horrendous, guys. Uh, this type of behavior is going to cost people their livelihoods. When you cannot sell your Meta Zoo Rudy, Rudy Chan promos, because there's not been a sale in the last four years, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Anyway, bye, guys.